Hey guys, in the previous video, I showed you how to backlink uh, email messages to contacts. You see I have here a business contact in Business Contact Manager, uh, and in history I have one item. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the previous video, uh, hi. Uh, I basically show people how to do a couple of things with Business Contact Manager. This is a tutorial that's going to be about history items and understanding history items uh, within Business Contact Manager. Um, as you see, you might look at my screen and say, oh, his Business Contact Manager looks very differently than mine. Uh, I'm actually using Outlook 2013 with Business Contact Manager 2013. It really makes no difference what flavor of BCM you have. Um, 2013 is very similar to 2010. Not much of a difference. 2007, however, there is a difference, uh, but still, very good system. Um, all right, so what I wanted to touch on, because I just made a video discussing about how to link emails back to history items, um, this video is going to focus more on understanding most of the history items in uh, BCM. You see, there's a general tab, a detail tab, and a history tab, and we can always make many fields in here and record all kinds of information, but the most important thing is not the information about our contact, uh, our contact, which is important, uh, obviously, but more importantly is that we're using a contact management system not just to manage a contact, uh, contact's information, but also to be able to be more efficient, more quick, and to be able to view what happened with this contact throughout its life cycle. Um, so I want to jump into leads real quick. Uh, again, I'm using a plain vanilla build of BCM. There's nothing special about this build. Uh, suppose I make a contact. I'm going to make a new lead, actually. I just went outside on the street, bumped into some guy, gave him my business card. He called me. Now he's a lead. Uh, and I'm going to give it his name. His name is uh, Bob Johnson. And Bob Johnson is a uh, marketer, and he works for Johnson and Johnson. Just some typical stuff, some information I got from him, um, and I'm going to save this person. So now he exists in my system as a lead. He's a person that I've not yet uh, have made any purchases with. And in other words, meaning uh, this gentleman is just interested in, in my product and he's just a lead. So I'm going to go into his history tab real quick. And the very first thing I'm going to review here with you guys is that with history, there's multiple things that you can add on to history. And as something progresses in its life cycle, when a lead converts, see the convert button, when it converts to a contact or to another entity we're building, the history moves along with it. So you never lose that history about that person. Now, what items could be contained in the history of a contact in Business Contact Manager? Well, we can get a business note in there, a phone log, an opportunity, a business project, a task, an email message, an appointment, and of course a file that's on our computer that we can attach, such as a contract uh, or a proposal or a quote or something of that nature. Um, so let's go one by one about these things. Let, let, let's see really what they are. Uh, business notes. Oh, in, in what sense do we use business notes? Well, I'm not even going to do that yet. Let me just go through the whole life cycle, actually. So me and Bob are, are, are talking, and uh, we have a phone call, and I'm going to go and create a phone, phone log. And what happens is is uh, a phone log basically just illustrates uh, the details that happened within a phone call. Now, what's cool about this is that if you have a secretary or receptionist, she could actually take the call, start the log for you, um, send the call over to you or to your sales team, and then your sales team can update her about what to write, or they can write themselves in the phone log, making pretty good history. So suppose Bob calls me and the subject is, um, I'm going to write in first call. So yeah, I always want to remember what happened during the first call with Bob. And the call type, we can always edit the criteria here. It is an initial call. He's the first call he ever gave me. The timer is to just the time how long we've been on the um how been how long we've been on the phone for. I can start the timer, for example, uh while I'm on the phone. I could just start taking notes. I could say, All right, uh I could say, Bob, call me because he would like my services. That's it. Simple as that. Uh, I'm going to pause the timer and I'm going to save this particular message. I'm going to save this phone log. Now you'll see in under the history we have a phone log now. The phone log is first call uh, and it's automatically linked to Bob Johnson as a lead, by the way. So that's the first call, right? Um, all right, so I'm talking to Bob and, and this is what a phone log is. A phone log is a place for you to store all your phone call information with that person. It's going to be categorized by date. Um, you can never change when it was created. It's locked in or when it was modified. It's locked in as well. It's very good that it's locked in. It creates auditing. Um, 
And I can create many notes here. Now, let's say a week later, uh, he calls me again, or I'm calling him, and this is going to be a follow-up call, and it's going to be, I'm going to name it second call. I start my timer, and obviously this is zero minutes because I'm moving pretty fast, so I'm not even going to use the timer. But the duration of the call, let's say, was for five minutes, and Bob is ready. That's all I'm going to write. I'm going to save and close this. Now, notice here I have a phone log for the first call, the second call. A subject can be anything. Uh, now, let's say uh, he's talking to me about... Um, He's talking to me about some of my services, right? So I'm going to create an opportunity now because I have an opportunity to get some some uh, money from Bob. Bob is actually telling me, all right, um, I'm interested in your uh, BCM training. So I'm going to write in uh, opportunity title is BCM training, and I'm going to add a product in here. I'm going to say, uh, as a matter of fact here, let me just write something random here, such as training. And I'm going to offer him training in BCM. And the quantity is going to be one. I'm going to charge him, let's say, I don't know, $850. Um, I can even choose to mark it up. I can mark it up $150. Uh, and I can click OK. You'll see BCM is very intelligent. Uh, it's going to automatically know what the unit cost is, what my, what the markup is, and what the unit price is. Basically, it already formulates for me how much money I'm looking to make uh, based on what I'm paying for a product. But in this case, I'm not paying for, I'm not buying a product to sell to Bob, I'm just offering service. You may get confused, but you'll understand what I'm saying in a moment. Um, mark here the sources, whatever, whatever, uh, uh, whatever means I went about advertising my service, say an advertisement so I can track it in the future. And I'm going to save and close this. Now you see in the history here, let's go back to the history, I have the first call with Bob, I have the second call with Bob, and then I have the opportunity in which Bob is considering purchasing services for me. Uh, so let's say now time went on by, Bob calls me, says, yeah, all right, I agree, I want your service. So I'm going to mark this opportunity as one, meaning that I'm awaiting this money in the bank. And I'm going to click save and close. Now I'm going to go and convert Bob, I'm going to convert him to a business contact. At this point, <clears throat> Bob is no longer a lead. He's actually a closed person. He's a closed deal, closed sale, and here he is right here, Bob Johnson. And what I was saying before is the history moves throughout the cycle of the lead to uh, a business partner or client. It moves through the whole cycle, and I have all this information here. And now I can move on further and show you the rest of the history items. Uh, we have business note. In essence, a business note can be anything. It could just be a note. That Technically, that's what it is. They call it a business note because you're using a business contact manager. So note is not just a proper name for it. So the note will be something like, um, I don't know, remember to call Bob on his birthday. How about that? Just something to say thanks. I'm going to add a timestamp here, a little smiley face, save and close it. See, now I have a business note here. Notice that each and everything has a different icon. The subject displays to you in, in a really nice order. You can sort it by subject. You can even sort it by item type. Uh, you can see here the f it's sorted by phone logs, by opportunities, or by business note. I'm just going to sort it by, let's say, subject or a link to when it was created, oldest to newest, and who created it, meaning which one of my salespeople, um, my uh, representatives, or my secretaries have made this. All right, moving further. So we have our two phone logs here. We have the opportunity, which I won for BCM training, and then I put in a business note. Next thing is the opportunity, that, and that next thing is the phone log, and we actually know what a phone log is. Any phone call that takes place from this point on, in this case, let's say this, there was a support call done, uh, say BCM support uh, level 2, and timestamp. I'm just going to write helped Bob. Again, I can create a whole essay about what I did with Bob and just note it here so I know everything that happened here. And you'll see here, and if I sort this by date, you could actually see it came the first call, second call, the opportunity for the business, the business note following, and then another phone call later on with what exactly happened. Uh, business support level two. Now this history always remains here. And this also includes emails, by the way. Um, I can also add a business project, and I created a whole other video about business projects. Suppose that I'm in an industry that uh, requires actual project management, where I'm either building something or constructing something, or something that takes several steps, several tasks to complete. Suppose I'm in, I'll create a website, and I have what I call a website a project, and I have different tasks in there, like gather the graphics, gather the get the hosting by the domain name. These are all tasks and projects. These are all things 
uh, to take into consideration and to put into projects. I actually have a video about this if you look at my channel. It's called Business Contact Manager, uh, working with projects, managing projects, I believe. That's what I titled it. Um, and it will be in the history as well. So you can keep a history of every single project you've done for Bob, or in my case, I could do it in opportunities or in business notes. And I can also create a task. And what a task is, is just, let's say I got to do something for Bob. Uh, let's say I'm going to write here, uh, send contract, uh, send contract. So that's all I'm going to know. I'm going to name it. And I'm going to make the start date, send it on, let's say, uh, Thursday the 3rd. And uh, have in here, I want to remind myself on the 3rd at 8 a.m. that I want to send, send over details about BCM project. And I'm going to hit save. When I hit save and close, <clears throat> what's going to happen now is it's going to create a reminder for me within Outlook. And you'll see everything also appears over here in my history on the very uh, side on the reading panel. And it'll also appear on my calendar. And we're going to get to that also in a moment. You'll see here that now on Thursday, right here in the history, you see date Thursday, send contract. And that's the upcoming Thursday. And I will receive a reminder telling me to send a contract. Now, this could be anything. This could pertain to any particular thing, not just contract or sending documents. It could pertain to anything. Uh, tasks is a very universal global thing. Now, we can also do uh, create a new email message. And I could say send it to bob at bob, 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 bob dot com. Just give me some random email. I'm going to write test, test, send it. And it will be noted here. The fact of the matter is that the email is not being tracked because it's not a real email. Otherwise, the email will show in the history. <clears throat> and it will become available for me to see. And with the previous video, I was showing how to track backwards to have more and more context and more and more information over here about email linking. Uh, every email you sent to somebody will be linked and tracked automatically. And all your previous emails from the past before there were ever even a contact could be also linked. Uh, and that can be shown in that video as well. Moving further down the list, we can also create an appointment, and this is something that will show on a calendar. Suppose that I'm in a, in a business where I actually have to go out there and do certain things, and I need to make a calendar appointment. I can do that using the Create New Appointment button, um, and I can automatically sync this, copy it to my calendar. So suppose I'm making an appointment for a calendar appointment. Suppose that I actually have a, a literal meeting with this, per with this gentleman, and the subject is going to be to meet the person, uh, meet and Starbucks, for example. And the location is going to be in NYC, and I'm going to say Fifth Ave Starbucks. I'm just giving some random uh, details over here, and I'm going to say meet Bob for a luncheon. And the start time of this is going to be on, let's see, on, on Friday the 4th. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, and I'm going to copy it to my calendar. Also, notice what's going to happen is not only will I have a, a track history of this, when I go over to my calendar, and let me hit my calendar. You'll see here that I have a meeting here uh, to meet at, at, at 9 p.m. with Bob right here, meet in Starbucks. And it'll actually note it in my calendar, and I could sync over to my phone or sync over to multiple things. So I have that in there, and that's just an example of how to use the create appointment um, history item. So let me move on further. Let me go back to, uh, to my recent item, Bob Johnson, and go back to his history page. And you'll see, take a look at how everything here is, uh, is lined up for me. Every single item that I've created now, between a phone log, an opportunity, a business contact, a task, and of course a meeting, everything is, is getting uh, it's streamlined. So I'm able to see streamlined history of what I'm doing. I see on Friday on the 4th I, had, I have a meeting, and eventually after Friday it's had a meeting, and I'll have a history item of it. Um, I have another task to do on the 3rd, which is Thursday, which is send over a contract. And then I can see the entire previous history that I had with uh, Bob from every single phone call, uh, email, uh, opportunity, business note, phone log. I could have had a project in there, but again, that's not something that I will get into this uh, particular moment. There's a whole other section for it. And the very last thing is a file. Say I go to file and I want to attach a picture. These are little pictures that BCM has to offer. Uh, and I'm going to add a file in here. And you'll see here now there's a file, an icon file that I just attached, and I can easily attach files in history items, and it'll be categorized by the date that I received them. Uh, again, I can just click on New, click on File, I can attach a whole other file. It could be PDFs, Word documents, it could be anything. It could be things I'm scanning, um, pictures, it could be uh, screenshots, anything I want. So that, in essence, is the entire historical view in BCM. 
everything gets uh, saved and everything is shown in the reading panel and the quick view panel when I click on Bob you'll be able to see that I have in my communication history a whole lot of items over here uh, including my meet in Starbucks uh, appointment uh, my task to send them a contract and whatever files I had attached and this is just my latest items when I actually click on Bob in its own and I click on history you'll be able to immediately see everything and this will last forever and it actually cycled with me throughout from the lead phase to the actual client phase or the contact phase and it'll work vice versa it'll go backwards too if I convert this this person back to a lead suppose the deal didn't go through um, and he's not a customer we went through a whole lot of mumbo jumbo and he canceled on me he's no longer interested in my service he said you know it's just not for me or I'm not interested in buying this product I could just convert him back to a lead where he belongs because he's now not a client of mine anymore and this history will still stay there so I can always remember everything I went through with this person so that's what I wanted to make the video about I wanted to show you guys everything about history items and how history items are used in BCM um, you know we have business notes for just about anything any kind of note an opportunity to track an opportunity of getting revenue uh, or selling a product or a service phone logs very important there for every single phone call we had to, with the person and then emails will be sticking in here as well um, as we move along with with uh, our communications all the correspondence in every way can be linked here and this can be accessed by the entire company so suppose I have a five people team or I have a 20 people 35 an environment with 35 people um, each and every one can create a different history item or update an existing history item as we move along with the life cycle of this particular contact no matter what industry that I'm in so that's what I wanted to show you guys I hope this video was informative uh, and it assisted some of you and I want to say thank you again for watching my videos uh, truly appreciate it. I'm very grateful for all the great comments and feedback I receive from my subscribers and my visitors uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and um, you know if you are thank you and I hope uh, you have made a uh, good sense of all my videos and put them to play and use out there in the real world um, so thank you again and I'll talk to you guys I'll see you next time